or the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond. We have vowed that we shall not see space filled with weapons of mass destruction, but with instruments of knowledge and understanding. Surely the opening vistas of space promise high costs and hardships, as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. This country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. Those who came before us made certain that this country rode the first waves of the Industrial Revolution. We set sail on this new scene because there is new knowledge to be gained and new rights to be won. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone and one we intend to win. We shall send to the moon, 240,000 miles away, a giant rocket, more than 300 feet tall, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of standing heat and stresses, several times more than have ever been experienced, fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, carrying all the equipment needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communications, food, and survival on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth, re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that on the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today, and do all this and do all this and do it right and do it first before this dictator's out then we must be bold as we set sail we ask god's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked